This is coming to the end of this journal. Four eighty four. So I just want to mention. Okay, so first of all, how do I get into this? the The last entries of this journal seem to be really important. So a lot of change has actually happened. This is in a short period of time, eleven eighty three to four eighty four. But I feel like a lot of changes happened in my life at the at this time. Um, I'm becoming more and more just sort of, um, you know, from the diary looking at it you know, I would say obnoxious, outspoken, but it's something that I needed to do because before that I was like this shy kid that people picked on all the time and didn't ever say anything to anybody and just internalized everything and became more and more depressed and all this kind of stuff. But it was, you know, it was a response to this really messed up situation that I was in and being targeted in this bizarre way. And um, being told just to kind of suck it up and all the time and, you know, just being, you know, praised for being quiet and, and non-troublesome, you know, that was that was sort of like what the teachers and everybody really liked about me before this was that I didn't create any trouble, but they, um, you know, I was a doormat, basically. So I needed to make this transformation that, you know, punk rock is what helped with it and also playing guitar and things like that into somebody that was more assertive. So that's sort of part of the process that's happening in, in this diary and that's part of why some of it is so unsuffer insufferable. There's this very interesting thing that I did. A, I actually wrote something about and published, maybe I'll find that somewhere, about, you know, me figuring out or deciding or believing Something which isn't, and actually, so this might be the only one that's in red in this particular journal, which makes it significant. As I think I mentioned in a pre, it is the only one. I decorated the sides too. So, um, no, there's two. There's two in red in this. The reason why I look at things that are red is because Kurt Cobain's suicide note was written in red, and it just kind of makes me wonder. I started to see references, I thought, to these journals in his suicide note. Not in his, just in his suicide note, but in his songs. And so I look at, look at what's red. So this is the one about me just noticing that... Um, In school, boys and men get treated different than women and girls. Or specifically, you know, I'm looking at this kid named Bill who um, had come up from L.A. who had a mohawk who was kind of, you know, sassy, punk rocker, and how the teachers respond totally different to him. Well, I might as well just say his last name because it's in here and it seems to be important. So his last name is Munch. Um, and he was just, you know, not in around for very long, but made a big impression on me. It was kind of there at a key part of my life. Um, anyway, I saw that the teachers and everything re responded so differently to him than to me. And, um, so I was believing that it was because I am a girl and he's a boy and, you know, I was crying while I was writing this, so it's got tear stains and everything on it. Okay, so that that was red, and is there another red entry? Yes. The other entry is about Bill leaving. Going back to L.A., didn't even say goodbye. He's, you know. Um, so, you know, I'd made him a mixtape and all the stuff. He took off and went back to L.A. And so I think my feelings were hurt about that. But it seems like maybe they were going to, he came back again or something. It was just this, oh, my goodness. So anyway, um, so that's the other thing that's in red. Um, so it's this sort of, you know, I didn't really admit to myself that I liked him, but I kind of liked him. Um, oh, and okay, so this is important, though, also because he had a mohawk. This is the only kid I knew with a mohawk, so I already have talked about that 
I already talked about um, that song Mickey and how it was, you know, obviously to me by now connected to Michael Payne, but the character of Mickey in the music video from 1981 or 82 has a mohawk. So this is, you know, a kid that shows up in probably 83 named Bill Munch. He has a mohawk from L.A. So there's something, something maybe with that as well. As far as like, oh, what do I think, um... Oh, and then there's this. A friend of mine, Sabrina, had just died of viral pneumonia in in L.A. I, I didn't know that was in L.A. Now, that's strange. I write, I resisted the temptation to get high during sixth period. Okay, I, well, I got high once at high school, and it was after this, so... Just FYI. I mean, this all this really is is it's just showing, you know, how much this stuff was going on in school, in my school at the time. There's a lot of, I mean, even junior high, there was a lot of um, drug use, you know, especially pot, but also other things. So, and regarding, um, regarding, so there's two entries in red, and one of them has to do with Bill leaving and everything like that. And so regarding this whole thing with Kurt Cobain and all of that, the other parallel line that I see in, you know, what I think are his um, covert communications or underlying communications in the last months of his life has to do with his um, marriage being at risk. So I see something in that, too. You know, it seems like the two things are kind of being connected together. The, you know, my teenage angst diaries and um, what he was going through in his personal life. But what bothers me, I mean, people go through things like that in their personal life. What bothers me is that people make too much out of the, you know, the one thing and they aren't paying attention or even acknowledge, acknowledging the, that the other existed, which is this mind control stuff. This is an early attempt at songwriting. <laughs> you got strong muscles and healthy bones, and you like the Rolling Stones. You've been here, lived there, never owned a teddy bear. You can charm girls, talk to squirrels, and heads full of natural curls, and then that's it. And then there's March 27th coming after that. So we have suicidal type stuff. Never have slashed my wrists, never, well, you know, I can't say I never did anything connected to self-harm or anything like that, because I have before this, but, you know, it's, um, was really shocking to me that, you know, people would take stuff like these journals and actually use them to back, back design plausible deniability, um, when they're kidnapping you and things like that, or trying to activate programming that they know you have, but you don't know you have self-destruct programming, so, um, you know, weaponizing mental health is really dangerous because uh, it basically does, stops becoming mental health and starts becoming, again, a system of control and a system of cr crime. Anyways, so moving right along from that, um, so now I'm already, you know, I'm already scheduled to go to Europe for a year, <laughs> but I'm having second thoughts mostly because I'm having fun now, you know, where I wasn't really having so much fun before. I have a guitar. Um, I have a, you know, drama-filled social life, more or less. Um, you know, for somebody, I lived actually out in the middle of the country and didn't have a car. So, you know, I'm going to school in Eureka, which is this, the town. So my social life wasn't super full, but it was, you know, it was exciting enough. I was having fun, and so I don't want to stay here. I want to move to Seattle. Yeah, well, Seattle seemed like it was more exciting. And playing my guitar, who's been ignored this past week, and blah, 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 blah. But yes, but because this is, well, the point that I'm trying to get to is this is almost exactly 10 years before Kurt Cobain commits suicide, so I feel like he's pointing to this stuff. You know, um, 
I want to move to Seattle and play my fucking guitar, who's been ignored this past week forever and never totally died, which it may be soon. It may be tomorrow. So this was on March 27th, 1984. 1984. So Kurt Cobain attempted suicide, supposedly, in Rome, right before he actually committed suicide. So I think that it was in March when his first suicide attempt was. And then he finally committed suicide on April 5th in Seattle. So I do feel that this, knowing that he's read my journals and knowing that anniversaries are important, you know, and I went back and looked around end of March, beginning of April every year, but this is 10 years before, which makes it a more of a significant anniversary. And um, I think there's sentiments in this, in here that he's referring to, you know, in his choices of how to, you know, how. And if this isn't teenage angst, I don't know what is. <laughs> okay, so now the next entry is April 6th. So those are the two entries close to the, you know, closest to the 10 year mark before he committed suicide, Kurt Cobain. And this is actually a dream. It's a dream. And so when Kurt Cobain committed suicide, I will have to look back, but my recollection is that he had left a REM record on the turntable and that April 5th was the 10 year no, not the 10-year, but it was the anniversary of the founding of REM. So April 5th, REM is one of those bands that's you know, has an anniversary day, and it's April 5th, which is also the day of Kurt Cobain's suicide. REM stands for Rapid Eye Movement. That's a stage of sleep where you dream. So that's why I think Kurt Cobain made these REM references at the end of his life because of the dreams, the dreams being so important, the dreams being programmed dreams with important information. So, um, you know, and then even this even says zap on it, you know, zap, which at the time I just thought was like sixties lingo. And now I realize it's a reference to, you know, lightning bolts, directed energy. Went on a trip to Seattle in the stream Jimi Hendrix was playing at a club called First World at 9... <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, okay. Well, so that must have been a forced cough because it made me stop and look at First World. So now we're getting into the connections between Prince and Kurt Cobain. And um, I'm seeing, I'm starting to see those. Just started to see them yesterday and I'm seeing more and more. So a, a club called First World. Well, there's... I don't know if there's a club called First World, but there was a club in Minneapolis called First Avenue. That was the club that was in the movie Purple Rain. And it's a place I lived very close to First Avenue when I stayed with Erica Schlager at the warehouse on 2nd and Hennepin in Minneapolis. Jimi Hendrix and Prince was sort of like Jimi Hendrix in his early days in his um, stagecraft. So that's also interesting. April 6, 1984, Jimi Hendrix was playing at a club called First World at 9 o'clock Saturday night. No IT. Wanted to see him a lot, forgot, and went to the Rocky Horror Picture Show. So instead of going to see Jimmy play at First World Club at 9 o'clock, which would have been the k killer thing to do, I forget all about it. Mind control. Space out. And we went to the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Michelle DiCostanzo was there, but it looks a lot like Michael. And so was everyone else. I kept yelling things like the F word or something, which you see a lot of in this particular journal. The sound was turned off and the lights on. This is like a Mean Mr. Mustard um, 
takes him out to visit the queen, always shouts out something obscene. This is also something that can be done with mind control. Different, you know, all the different forms of mind control and direct frequencies to begin with, but also um, just who you, a person is surrounded with and what a person is taught is cool. The sound was turned off and the lights on. I thought that was stupid. So the sound was turned off and the lights were turned on. Interesting. Next day I was, next day I was, uh, wiring and screwing, screaming, whining and screaming. I thought it said wiring and, okay. Whining and screaming and carrying on because I forgot about Jimmy's concert. We were at some place like Disneyland or Seattle Center. Okay, both of these places are, uh, significant. Just leave that there for now. A hippie started t talking to my dad, showed him something that Jerry Rubin gave him. He got my dad to gamble for Niners, a size of reefer. I forgot who won. Okay, just to say right now, so we have nine o'clock, Jimi Hendrix, First World, and Niners, a size of reefer. Uh, I think I had a vague awareness of my dad as being a pot smoker, maybe in the past, you know, but, um, anyway, so there's Jerry Rubin. Niners is slang for the 49ers football team also. I, f I forgot who won. We were called back to our car by a woman in a polyester fair uniform. I don't know what that means. Oh, maybe some uniform they wear at the fair. I don't know. Something like the hubcaps on our car wasn't right. I asked her where the first world club was. So I'm angry, screaming, carrying on because I forgot about Jimmy's concert. We're either at Disneyland or the Seattle Center. A hippie starts talking to my dad, shows him something Jerry Rubin gave him. He gets my dad to gamble for a size of reefer called Niners. I forget who want, wins. We are called back to our car by a woman in a polyester fair uniform. Something like the hubcaps on our car aren't right. I ask her where the first world club was, right at the end of this road, in the Jewish section. Then she looked at me and figured out from my carrying on I had missed the concert. She felt sorry for me. She had heard Jimmy was in good form that night. She had seen him before. Somehow she grabbed an electric guitar and started playing Star Spangled Banner, just like Jimmy did. And I write it SSB. There were books on a shelf. I tried to look up about Jimmy's high school in the index to see if my grandfather was in there. Earlier on, I have this. I write this story about how my grandfather was Jimi Hendrix's high school counselor. I didn't concentrate too hard, found a book on Paul McCartney. It showed his father, and the caption said he was, it looks like Captain, almost. He was 80 years old. He looked exactly like Paul at 20, except more wrinkles. And then I sign my name with a C. It's an E, but it looks like a C.